Hello my cross stitch friends. Welcome to my floss tube channel where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching and making all the things. If you are new, welcome. And if you are returning, I'm so happy that you came back to join me this week as we talk about counted cross stitch. I have two finishes to show you, which are also brand new pattern releases. I am the lead designer behind Ardith Design and the pugs, who knows if they're going to stick around and grace us with their cutie patootie little faces. Today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. So happy autumn to all of you up here in the Northern Hemisphere. It is gorgeous outside. Can't complain. I am truly happy to be here. I am going to be a little scattered today. I have so much to show you and things are piled up and falling and pug. I got a little wiggle butts here and they like to knock things over. Case in point, a scissor caddy I'm about to show you. <laughs> so things are going to be a little jumbled. Please bear with me. Know that my enthusiasm uh, surpasses my organization skills <laughs> for today. And ah, I'm just so excited. Okay. Uh, this is Loki Apple. This is Luna Moon. Both of them are, they're happy little pugs. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> he's probably going to go try to find a ball and we'll see what happens. I want to thank uh, a couple people uh, for asking some awesome questions. So we're going to do at some point a question answer thing. Oh, oh my gosh. What's going to happen? All right. Before the pugs hurt themselves, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Uh, first thing, I got some Happy Meal. Oh my gosh, so exciting. So ex I'm like over here melting. I'm so excited. Okay, I got a <laughs> Happy Meal package from a wonderful fellow floss tuber. And she sent me some vintage scissors. And I wanted to show you my little makeshift scissor caddy thing that I have. Originally, I put handkerchiefs on this. I have a vintage handkerchief collection. I know, I collect a lot of things. I, I know. What, what have I said before? <laughs> Less isn't more, more is more. <laughs> so this is a vintage spoon rack that I repurposed into a scissor holder. I cannot take credit for this idea. I originally saw it on Beth Twists of Heartstring Samplery. Her blog, I think back in like 2012, and then Mr. Jeffett's Stitches, Lori, a couple years ago also showed it, and I got inspired, spray painted a spoon rack white, used it as a hanky holder because I didn't have a lot of scissors, and now it's quickly filling up with scissors. So I want to thank, you know who you are, I got a wonderful car card, and I got, she sent me these scissors, two, three four. Where's the fifth one? Oh, I hope it didn't fall somewhere. <laughs> but thank you so much. And I added it to my collection. This right here is a piece of wood that got cut into a heart. I asked my friend and woodworker to make me some hearts for my Valentine book, Stitching Love and Kindness. Well, they didn't make it into the book, but they made it into my home. And I'm happy about that. This right here is actually the sticker sheet from Heartstring Samplery. Beth made her own custom stickers and I put that in with my package. This was a gift from uh, Every Home Needs a Gnome. I got that M for my last name. So this, I've got a lot of little treasures here and it's really exciting. So I wanted to show you that and I'll try to safely get this out of the way from Pugs. <laughs> it's normally propped up away from them. Uh, <laughs> my kid was helping me put the scissors up and he wanted to run. I'm like, no running with scissors. And then I realized I couldn't make any jokes like literary jokes or movie jokes because he's three. So in time, that stuff will come. I, what should I show you next? Ah, I'll show you. I had a little, a little finish. So I'm happy about that here. Oh, what are you doing? You okay? I got this kit. It is a cross stitch needle craft kit from Titan Needle Craft. Uh, my friend Grace from West Virginia sent me a couple of the kits. It's like on an old piece of paper. I made my working copy and I used the colors that came in the kit. It recommended perforated paper and then you make it into a greeting card, but I didn't do that. I stitched this on a piece of 
28 count or 32 count linen and it's a scrap piece. One of the things that I like to do with my small bits of linen is roll over that edge. I do not have a serger, although I would like one. Uh, and I go ahead and do that so I don't get the frayed edges. I originally thought I was gonna do Mr. Claus next to her, but I might just leave her by herself because I've got so many things that I wanna stitch. So I omitted, it, it's supposed to have metallic thread and then it's supposed to say happy holidays. She's supposed to be holding a purse. I took the purse out. Purse, I say pockets, not purses. <laughs> the stitching bags are different though. That doesn't count. <laughs> Your stitching supply bag. Anyway, so I think she's super cute. She's got cute little, those cute little pink cheeks. So I have one small little finish and I'm really happy about that. Okay. As I said, I'm kind of have a hodgepodge here. So, oh, let's, I'm going to show you a new release. I can't help myself. All right. I don't know if you all know this, but I love Christmas. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, Wheelie Love Winter is in the Just Cross Stitch ornament issue for 2020. I released Happy Holidays with the Merry Christmas alternative text that's on my website with the fireplace and the candles. I get that, that. And then I couldn't help myself. I had to do more Christmas because I just can't help myself. So this is my newest pattern and it is called Peace on Earth. I gave you all a little sneak peek of it last week, but here it is officially. It is stitched on 32 count Wexford linen by Silk Weaver and the colorway is called Lavender Diamonds. Now it's called Lavender Diamonds. It does have some purple modeling to it, but it's not a metallic. It doesn't have any um, metallic color. Um, there's no iridescence in the actual fabric, even though it's called Lavender Diamonds. I stitched this and, and charted it so it would specifically fit into a standard five by seven inch frame that has been something I was inspired by another cross stitch designer, uh, Stephanie uh, of Lindy Stitches. She has been designing more and more for patterns that will fit in traditional frames for those of us who do not have the budget or the ability to have our pieces professionally framed or professionally finished. So I sent my husband on down to the big W-A-L Mart and he picked out this frame for me does it match precisely? No. Does it fit the piece? Yes. And that's okay. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's done. It is stitched. And unfortunately, the light is not coming in for me to show you. It should be glittering. It is stitched entirely with Sulky 12 weight cotton and Sulky 30 weight metallic polystar thread. <laughs> and the 30 weight polystar thread is a combination of polyester and their metallic. I have to tell you, it was an absolute joy to stitch this and create this. I will say, and you can quote me on this, that the Sulky Polystar is my new favorite metallic thread. It outweighs my like of Hello Shimmer. Hello Shimmer is awesome, but it's really slippery and slick. This one's got a little bit of a, a grip to it and I really, really loved stitching with it. Can I say that it's uh, the equivalent of the Etoile by DMC? No, it's not. It's a thinner weight thread, but I I liked it. I, 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 I didn't like it. I loved it. So let me show you. I want to show you just a little bit of those like colors and how it all works. Again, just conventional frame. I don't know... I'll be able to take the back off and show you. I did lace the piece. I used one strand of Sulky, the, the acrylic thread. I just used one strand and I used a embroidery needle, not a tapestry needle, and laced it and centered it and laced it. I don't have any stitchery tape on it. Um, I don't have any, let me see, I'll pop it out and show you. So it fits right in the, well, I'm not gonna pop it out. It fits right in that five by seven frame. I cut a piece of acid-free mat board. It's just a thin mat board. The, um, 
chipboard is a term that's been used on um, the comic book backing boards that are acid free. All of those are good options for your piece. I don't have it behind glass and I laced it and I, I'm very happy with this lacing. I feel like it's nice and tight and snug. So peace on earth there. This Christmas tree right here has the different colors and then just the regular trees around. And then this is my own topography. I did not, that's not like a certain font or anything. Those were my, that's my writing <laughs> that I uh, translated into cross stitch. So I, I love, I love writing. I love cursive writing. I love handwriting. I think I should have taken more like professional, not professional, but I should have, I should have taken more classes in calligraphy or something. I think it's really cool. Professional letter writer. Uh, so I will show you those colors. They're buried a little bit. So I, like I said, things are a little out of order today. Please bear with me. Oh, no, they're not buried. I just moved them. They, I put, I've been putting my colors in this little caddy and it's been working out really well. It is a vintage Mary Kay nail polish caddy, but I have been using it to hold the threads. So what I wanted to show you is the whole pattern, it's using one strand of one and one strand of the other to create that sparkle. I got a lot of questions about this thread and someone asked me if I can stitch the, if you could just use the metallic and not, and not have DMC, not have the cotton at all, just the metallic. And yes, you can. However, it is a thinner weight thread. It's a 30 weight thread. So I would say two strands work on at least a 36 count fabric. Uh, so I would recommend two strands on 36 or 40 count if you're doing straight metallic. If you like to stitch like on a 14 count Ada or a 28 count linen, I would suggest trying three strands or four strands, but then that could get bulky and they could get knotted. So you might wanna just play around with it. I use this spool so much, I accidentally popped that top off. So I'm using just one of the, the bobbin for your sewing machine, but I ended up using that because these things pop off and I get, if I get a little too excited with my stitching, pop it and then I kind of yanked it instead of, <sighs> yeah, aggressive. <laughs> I'm very, I'm excited and aggressively stitching. So they have a bunch of different colors in this. I, I'm really excited. So Oh, that's from a different, that color is a different color, not in my pattern. So five, there's five of the metallics and then five of the regular cottons. I really liked this color combination. I consider it a non-traditional uh, color way. So uh, some people might look at this and say, Amanda May, that's not, that's not Christmas. That doesn't say holidays to me. Well, I just thought I'd make a little jewel Christmas. So you can see this one has been well loved. I'm almost out of the spool, <laughs> this one. but those are the colors. So you can stitch, you could stitch my pattern. You could take, if you hate, or I don't like the word hate. If you strongly dislike metallics, you could stitch it just with regular cotton. You wouldn't have to use the metallics. Or if you're feeling brave and you're like, I want to try it just in metallics, you could do that too. It could work. I even, at one point, I was thinking I was going to put these purple Mill Hill beads in it. And then I went, no, Amanda May, that's enough. You got, you got mottled purple fabric. You got metallic purple sparkle. You don't need to add purple glass beads too. Rain it in. Rain it back. Pull it back. <laughs> okay. The next thing, I have a pug literally dangling on my one, on my leg right here. She's just literally on one foot dangling. Are you okay, sweetheart? Can I move you? I'm gonna move you. They went for a walk before the video, so she's like kind of tuckered out. Okay, I'm moving my, my leg. Okay, oh, what do I have back here? Oh, so I ordered some books for my kids, and of course, a lot of these used bookstores will have deals like order three, get the fourth free, or whatever. They ship media mail, so 
that fourth book is like all profit to them because they don't have to pay the additional cost in shipping, blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> I got three books for my kids and I have all oh, fourth one free. Okay. So I was going through and I typed in all the keywords. So if you're looking for books online, like used books, or you're just searching, think about some of the keywords that for books that you might be interested in. Uh, several of you said you love the Danish Handcraft Guild, you know, type in Danish uh, or Scandinavian, needlework, needlepoint, needle art, needle craft. There are, and then if that comes up with too many searches, you know, counted cross stitch, cross stitch, and then those spelled differently, put together all the different types of keyword searches you can do. I typed in, I found this and I'm like, needlework, dragons and mythical creatures. Yes, please. So I got this book sight unseen, never seen what was inside of it. Yes, the cover of the book sold me. They say don't judge a book by its cover. Well, I did. And I'm happy I did. So I wanted to show you uh, some of the things these are this book came out in the 1970s. And it is a black and white book with the handwritten symbols. Again, we we're very fortunate to be in this time period right now where we've got charting software we have the internet I mean can you feel very fortunate so here I'm going to show you some of the pictures in this book so there they had the the traditional that unicorn they have the griffin and the dragon the one pattern in here that I really liked, it is um, the California Poppy Fairy. They don't have a model stitch of it, but they have, this is, there's, this is a black work dragon. I think two black work dragons. This is the Phoenix wall hanging here. And then a Pegasus pillow. So some really, just really kind of cool. And this, the, the alphabet down here, it has some fun little things. And then they have the Pegasus in, and that looks like it's using the specialty stitches with metallics. And then there's also a applique quilt with different things. But again, the pattern that I saw that I really like, they don't, they don't show a model, they don't have a model stitch for it, but I will show you the black and white picture of it is it is it showing up it's called the california poppy flower child cross stitch framed picture so i think that's really cute so again i couldn't help myself i had to add to my library yes it was needed okay the next thing i want to show you what do i want to show you oh I worked a little bit on uh, another one of my totem patterns and I ran out of 3371, which is the black brown, the DMC black brown. So I have to order more. But in the meantime, I, you know, I have enough whips to work on. So I went ahead and switched to a different project. This is Totem by Sitka Stitches. And I have been uh, thoughtfully informed that there are there's a, an Alaskan shop that still sells S Sitka stitches. I believe it's proprietary. It's only that shop, so that you can still find these patterns. So here is the start of this. This is on a mystery 32 count fabric that I got from Karen. Thank you, Karen. And I'm using a DMC, the 3371, that turquoise is a Victorian motto color. It is vintage aqua or 3849. I'm using the 783 for the copper and then the 920. So I'm using, I, I pulled these colors. They were part of my Barbara Anna mermaid that I stitched a couple years ago. So I still had the, some of the floss rings so I moved that <laughs> I'm really excited I obviously have the other side the other wing to go this is I left very small margin here I think I'm gonna add I'm gonna make this into a wall hanging where I'm gonna be stitching this right down and not framing it so I'm okay with having that small of a margin but they say you know typically you want to have at least two inches for framing 
I didn't leave that much. I am really liking that I'm stitching it with two strands over two on 32 count. Again, Sitka stitches. And this one is called Totem. And I'm really happy with it. And I'm just going to roll right into saying this. Uh, a lot of you have been very positive and complimentary of my decision to stitch the totem and to highlight Indigenous peoples during this commemorative Mayflower 400 year celebration stuff that's happening. I wanted to bring in a different, the counterpoint or a different narrative instead of the celebration retory aspect of it I wanted to talk more about well counter-colonial celebration as has been aptly termed so I have been following some stuff of reading a bunch of stuff and I saw a really awesome project being put on it is part of the Mayflower 400 commemorative program over in the UK I have all the links I'll show you why. <laughs> anyway, there is a project and it's a site specific art installation. I would love for you to go look at it. I don't have permission to show you what it looks like, uh, but I have the link for it. And it, it's called No New Worlds. And it is a lighted site specific art installation at Plymouth Harbor. And it's called Speedwell. Speedwell was the name of the ship that was the companion ship to the Mayflower that sailed but unfortunately had to turn around and go back to England. So that's what this project is called. I saw it and immediately my jaw dropped and I wrote the artists that uh, put up this light installation and received a written permission to chart the words, no new worlds in cross stitch. And so that's what I did. And here is my contribution to the May flower stitching that is taking place right now. This is a commentary on the idea of, you know, people going out to discover a new world. Well, if you think about it, there is no such thing as a new world when this there were thriving civilizations and millions and millions of people already in North America, South America. Australia, all the places that were colonized. So this is just a nice friendly reminder and a thing to think about that there is no such thing as a new world. So no new worlds. I stitched this on a piece of 32 count linen. It is stitched with one strand of sulky and the colorway is called caramel apple. This is a, the pattern I designed myself. I then finished it on an oval mat board. And for this pattern, I also included the template for the oval if you were to stitch this on a 32 count. And then you could obviously size it up or down, scale it accordingly if you decide to stitch this in a different print, uh, a different print, a different count fabric. I finished it uh, in the... I finished it with the oval. I decided to use a the batik here. I, I sandwiched and stitched it down and then went over with a ribbon, like a silk ribbon to also thinking about the historical implications. If you look at this piece, silk, you know, silk road, then the, the linen obviously is probably from Belgium or one of the countries in Europe that um, predominantly manufactures, uh, grows and manufactures linen. And then I want, I really, really wanted to include quahog or the wampum shells in this to acknowledge the tribal nation that first encountered the uh, people that were on the Mayflower. So they, the, the the shells, there's a beautiful uh, video, I'll have it linked, talking about making uh, a wampum belt, which 
it almost seems kind of like a belt, like a sampler belt, but made entirely of shells. So I went ahead and I purchased the wampum, but they're, they're the small ones, not the large ones. My wallet could not afford the large ones. <laughs> and I added uh, glass beads because also if you think about the historical implications of glass um, and the manufacturer of, of like Murano glass in Italy and how glass has really shaped our the um, global trade. And so I wanted to incorporate all of those aspects into this cross stitch. I sewed this down. I used size 11 glass beads and then these are eight millimeter and 10 millimeter wampum shell beads. I used two strands of this to sew these directly on and then I just wanted to show you what these beads look like. There's like the purple, you can kind of see the purple and the white. Again, you don't have to finish this at all like I did. I just really this uh, really meant a lot to me to do this piece and I would love it if you wanted to stitch it as well. And yeah, this is my other piece. I have it up on my website as well. So those are my two, my two new releases and I'm really excited about them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, before I, I love Christmas so much. I have, this is just a traditional like ornament display hanger that you can and I that's what I just put this on to have this displayed right now and I I love it okay I wanted to show you too that I cut out the oval you know and then laced and pull and did all that the, the oval finishing but these scraps right here I am going to go ahead and keep these scraps because you can do your little stitches and add cross stitches and then attach and make cute little spool art or spool ornaments. I have a couple Halloween spool ornaments up on my Halloween tree, decorative buttons, decorative ribbon, all the things. So again, keep all your linen scraps. <laughs> Let me show you a few more things I got from Amy. She also sent me a couple of the vintage pin cushions and look at this oh my gosh I love it so much and it's got a little bulldog and <laughs> my family loves bulldogs pugs and bulldogs so and it's got she left the <laughs> the vintage pins in love it and then look at this one put a bird on it he got a bird on his head he's so precious so I'm going to add that to my little sewing collection here if you get that pattern that I, I, I did, cr I did create that oval template. So I use that and then cr cut out the mat board. And then my scissor holder again is just, this is what a dusty, a rusty, dusty, crusty spoon rack holder looks like. You could paint it any color and then use it to hang up some of your goodies. So I wanted to show you that in case you haven't seen one of those before. <laughs> okay. The next thing I want to show you, I did some stitching on the dancing booby birds because who doesn't want to go to the beach and dance? I do. Oh boy, do I, do I want to go? Okay, I digress, but it's in the awesome bag, the 805 stitcher bag with that, those dancing birds. And I am happy to say that I have one bird done. I just need to add his dance partner to the page. Here he is. I am stitching it with all the called for threads. I went ahead and made my little thread drops and added the DMC colors and then the called for. So these are all the car called for colors. There's like four fancy flosses and the rest are DMC. And then one of the things because you never know when you're going to misplace something. Always kind of label the front of your project, whether you're using one of those really awesome, the thread, the, the really pretty little jewelry charms that hang, 
or you're using some sort of label so you know <laughs> if you lose some threads you know what which what it goes to so this is what the pattern how it's supposed to be the two dancing birds so I got the one done and one foot <laughs> you put your right foot in and this is stitched on 32 count peaceful purple linen and I believe that is by uh, which alt I want to say it's a witch alt I got the piece from 123 stitch it's one of their 9 by 13 piece pieces of fabric and I like that they serge the edges so that's one less thing that I have to do so that is nice that's what I've been stitching this week so I had three finishes two fully finished things that became my new releases one little Christmas ornament that I have to work on and then oh my gosh what else I got some happy meal so I got the used book I got some stuff from a quilt shop, but I'm going to show that in another video because <sighs> my husband gifted me some stuff. So it was awesome. I'll show that next time. I also put in an order with Kitten Stitcher for the magazine, the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. But because you can't have something travel alone, and you've all seen this magazine, right? I got the magazine for the Barbara Anna piece, stitch all the Barbara Annas. I, it, I love them. I also do punch needle, so I've been really enjoying that. And then I wanted to show that Wild Violet cross stitch. Look at that piece. It's a thread keep and it's a cauldron thread keep by Ryan and Wild Violet cross stitch. And then it's got like a pillow thing where you tuck in your threads in that pillow. I love it so much. So that was really cool to see in this magazine. I didn't realize that Ryan was published. So congratulations, Ryan. Love your work. I love these things. They're called like black bone pieces. And uh, they're saying that you can get them at Top Knot Stitcher Shop, which I have not shopped with her, but I've been hearing more and more good things about her. So yeah, they're called... Um, Bone rings, handcrafted bone rings, 22 millimeters. They're really cool looking. So again, the Barbara Anna piece, I really want to do. There's beautiful pieces in here. And then um, that's the pin keep that Kitten Stitcher put in. Just so many awesome things. Oh, make all the things. So because this could not travel alone, I ended up getting six yards of the ruler twill tape I think she charges like 60 cents a yard so I got six yards of that what am I going to do with it <laughs> I don't know and she included a sampler sticker so I'm gonna keep that it's like one of her little goodies so I'm really excited about that and then because my husband treated me I added this to my cart I had been looking at it for a while and I finally put it in my cart so it is a kit it came with all the goodies so I can just pick it up and stitch and enjoy myself so it came with the ribbon all this stuff so I'm really I'm really happy about that it's got it's a beautiful urn and a bouquet of flowers I have very eclectic stitching tastes and that's okay it's okay I also got in the mail couple more things. <laughs> I want to thank you. Oh, I, the questions and answers. I got a, um, several questions about whether or not I have an official sulky thread conversion for cotton to DMC, the acrylic to DMC, the polystar to DMC. No, but I wrote, I wrote to sulky and said, Hey, do you have color cards? And they said, yes. So I got the color cards for the thread. This is the acrylic thread and it's at the actual sample pieces. So I am going to be working on making a DMC conversion for the acrylic thread, 
Um, it will not be endorsed or sponsored by Sulky. It will be my own project that I take on myself. And they also had, she sent me the Polystar, which you can kind of see the sparkle a little bit more on that. Love it. And then here are these colors. Can you see the sparkle? Ah, all the things. My last little bit I want to show you because I can't wait to actually open them and use them. I, because I need more hobbies in my life. I, I finished my quilt pillow thing. So I sewed. Did a bunch of stuff. Now I need more hobbies. I was sent uh, a couple of kits to review. So I am going to be, I want to open them and make the things and review the things. So the kit that was sent to me to review, I got the Annie's Creative Woman kit. And it is the felted pumpkins. So I have a wool sensitivity. So I might have to put on my safety goggles and make some cute little pumpkins. So it came with all of this stuff. So I can't wait to open this up and see how to make those cute little pumpkins. I will have the link for this below. And then they also, I also received the kit. They're, they're doing a brand new, um, the Annie's Farmhouse Kit Club. And look at this wreath. Oh my gosh. So I, <laughs> I want to make it right now, but I had to show it to you first at uh, the, the start of it before I actually start making it. So they sent me the wreath. Then they sent the goodies. They, it looks like it's laser cut. I don't know what it's called when they, I think it's laser cut. So it came with all the felt strips and then, uh, all the leaves. And then, so you make your custom leaf thing. And then it came with the pom poms and the ribbon. And then it even came with a little, the command strip so you can hang it. So I'm excited. I really, <laughs> really want to make it. So I don't know how I'm going to be able to do the, the needle felted pumpkins. I might recruit my kid and my husband, you know, to craft because they need more hobbies. <laughs> oh my gosh. So personal stuff now I will share with you. My three-year-old <laughs> is like loving helping with everything. Helped me with the product photos for my new stuff. He wants to be on camera. My daughter wants to show you all the things. Uh, but then he's like wanting to do all the projects. So I have, I've been getting books from the library, you know, crafting with kids and really trying to foster that love of art and learning um so it's been it's been <laughs> it's been really fun and <laughs> just like how do you draw a porcupine mom well, just put a lot of quills in it <laughs> so it's been it's been good I I want to thank all of you for uh, joining me this week on this stitching adventure I I really appreciate all of you. Yeah, don't we? Yeah. Oh. I hope that you know. Yeah. I hope you know that I really do truly ap appreciate all, all of you. I am a little slow on keeping up with the comments. Please know that it's not a lack of desire to do so, but um, if I try to comment on my phone, my like the comments will disappear. So I have to physically sit at my computer and type, which is great if my kids let me sit on the computer. But no, my three-year-old wants to design cross-stitch patterns on my computer, or I, I go to go on my iPad and he wants to draw on my iPad. I'm like, child, just give me a minute. So between homeschool and everything, I have been slow on comments. Please bear with me. Please know I'm just slow with responding. Um, but I appreciate all of you. Thank you for thinking of me and reaching out. This, this time is, it's been a, it's been a year. I please know that I do appreciate you. Please know that you matter. 
your stitching matters. Don't let anyone take the joy of stitching away from you. There are way <laughs> more projects that I have that I want to stitch than I have time to stitch. What is it? The Sable Stash Acquisition Beyond Life Expectancy. Hmm. So anyway, stitch what you want when you want. Um, know that I love you. Sending lots of love to you wherever you are in the world. Mwah! The pug send, pug love, pug hugs and kisses. Take care, my friends.